evening and welcome to Grandma's Attic Music Review. It feels like we've been away for a long time. We did have a little hiatus there and you got to see some repeats of some really incredible shows which will all be down at Pride on the Beach coming up. So check your schedules for that. Tonight I have with me an incredible trio of multi-talented, multi-instrumentalist women. These are award-winning, this is an award-winning group. They have played all over the place and they're going to be playing at Friday Night Folk coming up in September. Um, check out the FridayNightFolk.org website to see more about that and get your tickets because these ladies are off the hook. Welcome into your home and into the studio. Enjoy this, this sound they bring to you, the beekeepers. So much to Dot for having yeah. us on the show. Um, we're really appreciative. And to my left, we have Sylvie Harris. Um, she is on banjo, she's on guitar and bass. And then to my right, we have Fred Molesky. She um, is a vocalist, she is the accordion player, piano, glockenspiel, um, hand percussion, and the ukulele. Comic relief. And comic relief. <laughs> and my name is Mandy, and I'm also one of the vocalists. I play guitar, and then I also play the Merlin, which is this little dulcimer guitar hybrid right behind me. Alrighty. Also the triangle. I play oh, the yes. triangle too. You forgot to mention that. So there'll be a lot of tuning too. So 
We'll try to inject some jokes here and there. Fred's got some good ones. <laughs> no, I don't. I wouldn't call them good. I like them. <laughs> oh, thank you. change instruments. <laughs> so this next song was actually written by Fred and it is called Walking Disaster. Semi-autobiographical. <laughs> it's one of the many instruments, the foot tambourine. It'll probably fall off. <laughs>
walking disaster Big black cloud over my head Ring down lightning strike you dead Running hide under the bed I'm a walking disaster
So am I. <laughs> so this right here is called a Merlin. Um, Fred likes to call it dulcimer on a stick. On a stick. So basically, it's a dulcimer Appalachian folk instrument that you usually play on your lap, but um, they, you know, put it so you could hold it like a guitar and play it like a guitar, which works for me. Thank you. 
Thank you for writing that song, Sylvie. Yes. That's a good one. Oh, actually, I'll probably keep that there. Ah, oh, now I get to play another instrument that I haven't played yet. Another instrument. So the next song is called Dull Drums. So this is actually a song um, I started, um, and then Fred and Sylvie helped me finish. So this is one of the ones that we all worked on together. I get the zone for this one. <laughs> so do I. Okay. You ready? Mm -hmm. Those strings, they like to drop sometimes. Yep. All right. Just a second. Got a, I got a bunch of switches. I got a bunch of switches to pull here. Let's Strapped in, ready to go. Right. Lift off. Mm -hmm. 
Don't look at me now, look at me now, cause then you can do what I'm feeling. Don't look at me now, look at me now, cause then you can do what I'm thinking. It's a bad idea, and we both have fear, so we just keep quiet. And every day, it eats us away, soon our song may not Cause you and I both know It's bound to happen And we keep our mouths closed Even though we want them open Cause you and I both know It's bound to happen And we keep our mouths closed Even though we want them open Cause we are one and the same, so I guess I can't blame these feelings I have of torture. We're lost, drawn to the plane, we're a runaway train, cool cascading waters. And how can we hold to this out of control? Why do we even bother? Yeah, she's a nice girl, but I could give you the world, but instead I'll just stand here and smile. Cause you and I both know It's bound to happen And we keep our mouths closed Even though we want them home Cause you and I both know It's bound to happen And we keep our mouths closed Even though we want them home Cause one day Keep going. Keep
If you want to come and sit and talk for a few minutes, we can yeah. do that. Sounds good. All right. While they're um, finding their way over, over here and hiding away all their instruments, <laughs> let me just remind you that Pride on the Beach is coming up, and you can find out more about that at outct.org. And that's going to be a wonderful event with all kinds of great music, including Jody and the Vault, Braid and Sunshine, and... Um, Sister Funk, who have all been here on this show. You know them, you love them. Uh, get out and support Pride. It's going to be a wonderful event. Ladies, put on your microphone so we can have a chit chat. There you go. <laughs> We're all connected. Well, almost. Sylvie's over there getting connected. How are you doing, Fred? I am fabulous. It's wonderful, <laughs> wonderful to see you again. You and I have connected on so many levels at so many different times. I just absolutely adore you and what you have done for the music community. Um, where did you find these two? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> well, they sort of found me, actually. Well, there you go. I mean, Sylvie and I worked together um, in Celticity, the Celtic trio, and then actually Mandy did, too. But... Um, yeah, they, they had started a duo called the Beekeepers, and one day I got this email from them saying, hey, you know what, we've, uh, we've, we've got this group and we think you could add some good energy to it. Do you, do you want to join us? And at the time I was in like four bands, and I'm kind of going, hmm. <laughs> 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 but this just sounded too good to pass up because you know, they were writing their own stuff and everything, and I thought, hey, that'd be kind of fun. You know, it'd be sort of like, kind of raise the bar on my, my own life, get, the, get those brain cells moving around again. 
you know, and just get really creative with two really cool, creative people who are just insanely good musicians. Awesome. So. Sylvia, is that your take on the whole deal? That is my take. I mean, the part that she didn't share with us is Mandy and I were like, do you think Fred would join? Do you think Fred would join? <laughs> right! Because we were really excited. We really wanted to have her, mainly for her vocal, you know, the vocal talent that she brings and the diversity to the group of the vocal talent and the harmonies. That, the harmonies that, are fabulous, that by Fred the way. That Fred and, you know, Mandy create together are, are just incredible. And it really makes the beekeepers, I think, who we are. Well, it really does. So. Um, our cameraman just posted a video and the first comment was beautiful harmonies. Yeah. Oh, so wow. nice. that's nice. already up. You guys can check it out on Facebook after this is Great. all, it's all going to be good. Mandy, what's your take on the whole bringing you guys together and how did you find Sylvie? So I know Sylvie because I grew up with her kids. Um, we all went to NFA together. Um, and Sylvie was one of my first classical guitar teachers because that's what I went to school for. Okay. And then I've just always stayed connected with her family ever since. And, um, you know, I got to know because she started Kilticity with Fred and then another musician, her name is um, Megan Nelson. Okay. And she's a flute player. And so um, when Sylvie moved to Massachusetts, they said, well, we need a classical guitar. She goes, I know one. <laughs> so that's, that's how we all kind of met. Right, right. All together. And it's just, I know, I just feel like, you know, Sylvia and I started this, and then Fred comes into the mix, and it's just like, just like a whole other dynamic that just like adds energy and just all the instruments. It adds tons of color. It's great. It does. You all seem to be multi-talented instrumentally. <laughs> um, Sylvie, how long have you been playing the banjo? Um, I've been playing the banjo for about five years, I would say. So, the instrument I'm played uh, this evening is actually a banjo tar. It's a little different than a banjo because it's a hybrid between a guitar and a banjo. So it okay. has six strings. It's tuned like a guitar. Right. So I'm cheating a little bit. <laughs> um, it makes it a little easier to play. I don't have to uh, learn a whole new tuning. I already know how to play guitar, so I'm just taking what I already know and putting it on another sound. Okay. Um, so it's a banjo guitar. Um, and yeah, I've been playing it about five years. Now, do you also teach music? Can people find you to get lessons from you? Um, I'm thinking about teaching again. I did. I taught for many years, and I did teach in the Norwich area. Just probably about a, at least a hundred students have gone through my guitar studio. But I'm, right now, I'm focused more to songwriting. I find that that's nice. what's really fulfilling for me is writing songs. Um, so I'm more focused to that right now. So who is the primary songwriter for the Beekeepers? I think Sylvia is. Well, I mean, the, the interesting thing is we're all songwriters. Right. Um, I just started sooner, I think. So I've been songwriting for, I've been writing songs for a number of years now. Okay. Um, so, um, and I think, so Mandy's probably a little more new at songwriting, and Fred Fred just sort of joined the songwriting bandwagon, but we're, we're all writing songs. So this evening, you actually heard songs written by all of us, which is kind of cool. And what's nice about that is we all have such different personalities that we bring a di every song, you know, brings a different flavor to the group. Right. And I think that makes it far more entertaining for the audience than to just hear one songwriter. Mm -hmm. uh, Fred tends to put in some humor into her <laughs> songs. They tend to be a little bluesier and jazzier elements there. Um, mine tend to be more finger picked and slow. And Mandy likes a sort of edgy alternative uh, sound in her gonna, songs. Yeah. So we all bring something different to the table and I think it's what makes the group so interesting. It's wonderful. Mandy, when you are sitting down to write a song, is that how it happens? You sit down and make yourself write a song? Or does the song come to you in some kind of dream or vision? It's more like when I'm driving in my car down the road. So um, say I don't have the radio on, and all of a sudden I start thinking about something. Like a, um, Say like um, one song I'm about to play is called What A Day. And uh, what a day, and I'm singing it, I'm singing it over and over, and then I keep adding and adding while I'm driving and I'm thinking. <laughs> And then um, I'm really bad at finishing songs, but Sylvie and Fred are gr I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, yes, I'm bad at finishing songs, but Sylvie and Fred are good at finishing songs. Okay. So a lot of times I'll think of hooks and ideas, and then that's when we all come together. That's wonderful. That's yeah. such a partnership, and you don't see that in a lot of groups. Fred, tell us a little bit about your songwriting, because you're a songwriter, too, and I've <laughs> been privy to your songwriting skills. So tell us a little bit and tell our audience a little bit about you and your songwriting. Well, I mean, they, they sort of hit me upside the head. Um, in fact, Walking Disaster, 
I think I love I, I, that <laughs> song. Love that song. <laughs> well, that was inspired by a true event. Um, at least the first line was. So now everybody laughs at the first line because it says, "When I when they see me going by, the dogs start barking and babies cry." They really do. I, I have a I have a steady job as a Catholic mass cantor at five o'clock on Saturdays at St. Patrick's and Mystic, and it seems like. You know, inevitably, I'll open my mouth to sing something, and then all of a sudden, I'll hear it. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, you know, my voice makes babies cry. Who knew? So, so I just one day I was I I think I went out for a run or something, some kind of a workout, and these things come to my head when I'm working out, and I can't write them down. So, like Mandy, you know, um, I just sort of repeat it over and over in my head, and I start to add to it. Mm -hmm. And that's where walking disaster t um, came from. And sometimes they hit me so hard upside the head. I feel like I, I, I think I called it. I mentioned to you at one point um, a few weeks ago. It was like taking dictation from God. Right. You know, it just you sort of. That. It's it's kind of like it it just hit me so suddenly. I I didn't feel like it really. I don't know. I just sort of felt like it was passing through me. I mean, it's not, you know, incredibly great high art, but I appreciate the fact that it just kind of hits me and I go, "Ooh, I got to write this down because this might like lead to something else." And and in this case, it kind of did. So It really does. Yeah. So you guys are a, an award-winning band. Tell us a little bit about the award that you won and um, what that meant to you as as a group. Uh, we won an award called the Academia Music Award. And it's for independent artists. It's it's a international organization that's been around for many years. Right. And uh, we submitted um, a song I wrote called Indecision, mm -hmm. um, which was, I believe, the first song we played this evening. And um, it, it actually came back as a surprise because they listened to the whole EP and they gave us an award for the be for best EP. That's wonderful. Yeah, so th that was a nice surprise, and the organization does a lot of things for independent um, artists. Yeah. So they did a lot of promotion for us, and I have a feeling, Dot, that that's how your friend in Florida heard us, because they put us on all kinds of radio uh, yeah. across the country. Mm -hmm. um, and every once in a while I hear, you know, somebody heard us play, and it's, it's probably from that award, because they did a lot of promotion for us. Right. Well, yeah. you're an easy <laughs> group to promote. You're so much fun to listen to. And you're so, so talented. Now, do you have some gigs coming up besides the Friday Night Folk? We're excited about Friday Night Folk, and we'll mm -hmm. talk about that in a, in a minute. But what do you have going on for other things? Well, um, we do have some other gigs coming up. We're, we're booked through October. Okay. Um, one of the gigs we really enjoy playing is the Monroe Music Festival in Monroe, Connecticut. Okay. Okay. Um, a friend of ours named Will uh, puts on that festival and he does a fantastic job. He brings mm -hmm. in all genres of music from jazz to classical and we're fortunate to be one of the folk groups yep. that he's asked back. We played there last year as well and that'll be in October. And all our gigs are on our website. So we're and at what is that website? It's www.thebeekeepers.net and our schedule is always up to date with our most recent gig on, is posted to the homepage. So right now we have Grandma's Attic on the homepage. <laughs> no, yes, we, do. Yeah. we like that. Yeah, yeah. That's a good thing. The, um, the event that I'm really excited about and one of the reasons that I really pushed really hard <laughs> to get you guys on this show is because I wanted to talk about Friday Night Folk. Friday Night Folk is um, a series of concerts that starts in September and goes till May and it brings in local and internationally known folk artists. And you guys are kicking off our season this year in September. How does that feel? Really awesome. exciting. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, wait, it's just us? We're, we're the opening act and the headliner? <laughs> you, you guys are the headliner. You guys yeah. are the ones. Yeah. We're that, very excited. Yes, we and are. And we're working hard. We're practicing a lot for it. We're bringing in new material. Oh, nice. Just special for Friday Night mm -hmm. Folk. That's yeah. going to be so much fun. If you guys want to know more about that or want to get tickets, you can go to FridayNightFolk.org or you can find us on Facebook under Friday Night Folk. And please, this is going to be one of the best shows ever. It's a great season. The season lineup is there. We have people like the Kennedys and Tom Chapin are going to be with us this year. So um, really, go in and check it out. We've got a huge, huge, great lineup. 
Daphne Lee Martin will, will be with us. She's a local. She's going to be with us in December. And kicking off the whole season, we've got the beekeepers, already award winners, already internationally known, fabulous at what they do, and you know that because you've been watching them. Let's talk a little bit about your musical background. You took lessons from Sylvie. When did you actually start playing um, music, and what what intrigued you into the music world? Okay, um, so I started playing guitar maybe when I was around seven. I took just regular, you know, steel string acoustic lessons. And what kind of triggered that for me was, or inspired me, was that my dad has this old guitar that he's had since he was a kid, and he took lessons maybe here and there, but it just sat in the living room. I was mm -hmm. just like exposed to it, and I remember. Um, I always want to take lessons, but my mom said, I think you're a little too young. I think I was like five or six. And then um, one day my sister comes up to me. She goes, Mandy, guess what? I go, what? And she goes, I get to take guitar lessons. And I was so jealous because that was the one thing I wanted. Aww. Yeah. And then about a couple months later, maybe a year later, she quit. And then it was my turn. And yeah, then, yeah. I, then I, you know, I stuck with it. It was my passion. So, yeah, all because my dad's, you know, guitar in the corner. Now, what made you turn to the dulcimer? So at first I wanted to play mandolin, so I went okay. to the guitar center, and I have like thicker fingers because they're kind of muscular because of classical guitar, and um, or maybe they're just kind of thick in general and fat, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so I go there and I pick up a mandolin, and my fingers are just like, the, the frets are too small for me, at least for the mandolin that I was playing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I really wanted a mandolin, but I don't, I don't like the feel so far. And a guy, one of the salesmen comes over and he goes, oh, you got to check this baby out. It's a, it's a dulcimer. I'm like, really? He goes, yeah. So I start playing it, and I fell in love with it. And then I took it home, and I started writing on it. So, Oh, how cool is yeah. that? Now, Sylvie, your musical career goes back a few more years mm -hmm. than Mandy's. Where did your music career start? When did you fall in love with music? What made you decide to make music your thing? Um, I grew up in a, a musical household. My father um, played the organ. He played this great sort of pop, I call it a pop organ because I don't know what else you call it, but it had all kinds of gadgets and buttons on it and it could nice. make beats yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. salsa sounds. We had one of then, those in our house you know too. What I mean? yeah. It had all these little knobs you can press. So, you know, as a kid it was pretty fascinating. It was. And he played it really well and he, he loved playing. He played every day. Um, he played by ear, like a lot of, a lot of nice. different pieces. And so um, I started sitting around and, and playing the organ a little bit and um, I got a guitar as a Christmas present fr from my parents. They knew I was interested in music mm -hmm. and uh, they were very supportive. Thanks, mom and dad. <laughs> um, they uh, took me, I had a lot of music lessons and I, I um, immediately started with classical guitar. So my training is different. Mm -hmm. I was primarily a classical musician. All right. And I went on to study that and it honestly wasn't until about five or six years ago that I started moving away from classical and the stepping stone was the Celtic music. Okay. Because um, I was playing this Celtic music with a lot of very beautiful melodies. Right. And that led me to writing my own songs and, and playing more folk music. So it was from classical to Celtic to folk. I didn't immediately you know, pick up a guitar and start strumming um, and, and playing popular music. That came later for me. Now, you guys do have an EP out. Is there a plan for a bigger, longer <laughs> CD in the future? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Fred. Well, tell us about that. Well, uh, we, you know, because we've been writing new material, and we are just kind of, you know, steady as she goes with that. These things always take longer than we they originally do. anticipate because, you know, this thing called life gets in the way sometimes. But um, we, that is still definitely the plan. And we, we just about have a CD's worth of songs all, all up and running and ready, pretty yeah. much. You know, mm -hmm. take very little to, to finish them all up and just do it. So there's definitely, there's definitely a plan for a CD, you know, in, you know a full on CD. Okay. so. I want to hear a promise here in public in front of all these people uh -oh. that when you have a CD ready, you'll bring it back here and you'll let us talk about it and play the songs on it when, when it's ready. Okay. That's I a want great a promise. Idea. That's a promise. All right. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Yep. Well, it took so long to get you guys 
on the air. It took so long to get you guys into the studio. And I know that you all have day jobs and you all do other amazing, miraculous things, but it's just wonderful to have you here in the studio with us playing the instruments. Fred, I really want you to talk about all the things you do. <laughs> you really want me to talk about that, right? No, you, can, okay. you, can, you can condense that by, by explaining to me why you have such an interest in playing so many different instruments. The utter lack of an attention span. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I don't know. I just, ever since I was a little kid, I've always been sort of mechanically minded and just love figuring out things that have moving parts. And I was always rather fascinated with accordions. And just, I don't know, I have, I have this church job up in Essex, Connecticut, and they, had, they brought in an instrument one day called the psaltery. I and know what a psaltery yeah, is. Yep. I have a very good friend that has mm -hmm. written a book about a psaltery, actually. That's cool. Yeah, to, she's pretty uh, she's to tell pretty me about amazing. that. So, so I walk into the choir room, and there's this funny triangular-shaped thing. And I went, hey, what's this? And they said, it's a psaltery. I said, ah, oh, cool, who gets to play this? And they all point at me, and they're like, you do. <laughs> I'm like, OK. And so I just took it out of the box, and I just started messing around with it. And then when we formed the Celtic group, I wound up playing the psaltery. I got my own psaltery, and I played it in the Celtic group. So I, I guess I'm into, hey, let's figure out how, if, if I can play this thing, let's figure out how it works. I mean, I've had some piano training you uh -huh. know, from when I was a little kid. Um, but then I just, and I played guitar a lot in college. I was, I was a guitarist. Not like these guys are guitarists, but I, you know, I did a lot of you know, Simon and Garfunkel, Joni Mitchell, what have you. So the ukulele is sort of like that. It's actually just enough like that to confuse the heck out of me sometimes. But um, I don't know. I just always liked doing a million different things. I'm yeah. the sort of person who's not happy unless I am doing a million different things. So as a result, I am now a full-time freelance musician and, t and voice teacher. What and I do a million things. What a dream come true that is. For, for most musicians <laughs> want to be a full-time musician and be able to devote their entire life to their musical craft. What a dream come true that is for you, Fred. It could be a nightmare sometimes, though. It can be scary. <laughs> I, I, I don't when, agree. You know, I don't agree. Well, I it, think it's amazing. I've had to be really organized. I, I am historically terribly disorganized, especially with my time. But I've had to. It took me about 12 years <laughs> to get organized enough to feel like, OK, I have some control over the situation. Thank goodness for phone calendars. <laughs> well, I think that it's wonderful, and I think the three of you together are amazing. I think that the best thing for me to do now is to turn you guys back over to your instruments and get you to take us out with a song. Would that be all right with you? Yeah. Sounds yeah. good. All right. So while, while they're getting over there okay. and getting back, yeah, don't forget to unhook. <laughs> yeah. Unhook your little things. All right. So are they wonderful or what? While they're getting over there and getting back set up, let me just remind you about New London community and your friends and neighbors that have galleries and restaurants and little small shops all up and down State Street, all up and down Bank Street, all on the side streets of New London. You know, if you support small mom and pop shops, your community thrives. When we go down there to a gallery and support a local artist or a local musician or a local business owner, we're spending the money in our community with the p people that live in our community. That's what it's all about. Remember that when you're out for the rest of the summer. I hope you guys all enjoyed this show as much as I did. I'll see you all next week. Until then, bye-bye, God bless, and have a really great week. Circle inside and say you Everlasting